Alright folks, welcome back. It's been a quiet week in Crimson Skies, my favorite playing game. Time to get back into it. There's our lovely plane, nothing's changed back here. Let's go ahead. As you know, with Miss Cooper's coaching, we were able to get Betty a small part in a new movie being shot on Johnny's lot. She traded in her flight suit for a bathing suit, and I have to say, she looks good. <laughs> yes, sir! Oh, Chief. I wanted to go. No offense, Tex, but uh, you're too skinny for the movies. <laughs> <laughs> After the Lana Cooper disaster, that high hat Johnny Johnson thinks he's going to save face with a new publicity stunt. Brother, is he wrong? Johnny's going to show off his pride and joy tonight. The world's largest plane, the Spruce Goose. The big reveal is the talk of the town. All the newspaper, radio, and newsreel people are already swarming the joint. This is where we come in. We're gonna swipe Johnny's plane before he gets a chance to unveil it. Oh, Cap, you're bad. You're bad. Thank you. <laughs> the plane, uh, seaplane actually, is stored in this hangar here. Thanks to Betty's new backstage pass, she can get inside and commandeer it. But she needs our help to get out. The only way to blow open these heavy doors is from the inside. Betty says these fake torches are fueled by huge propane tanks. I'll fly in through the back of the hangar and blow those tanks. That should open them. And if they don't? I'll crash into those doors at full speed. Talk about your short missions. <laughs> yeah. Once the hangar is open, Betty will fire up the Spruce Goose and taxi her down this channel out into the Pacific. Once Betty's airborne, we need to clear out any enemy fighters in the area so she can safely get out to sea. We'll rendezvous with her later. Any questions? Good. Let's get to it. Well, all right. It's pretty much going to be business as usual here. We're going to go pull up the old Devastator, the hullabaloo guy from the last mission here. Good speed armor. Well, we, we already know how this guy goes. I'm going to use the old honest mistake since you can't really beat two huge cannons backing you up. Uh, this one's uh, we're going with the hullabaloo because it's got hard points. Hard points are, are fairly important. Uh, in this mission, we've got to deal with lots of auto gyros, and uh, and those are best dealt with with uh, with rockets. So let's uh, let's go do some damage, shall we? Thanks. Wish me luck. Wishing over. I hope you know what you're doing, Chief. You sure those tanks will blow open them hangar doors? They better. A few well-placed shots on those tanks on the hangar and those doors should be history. So here we go. This is the, uh... Yeah, got him. This is the hangar with the spruce goose. Damn! That thing is huge! Uh-oh, they're on to us. Expect Studio Security Response Fighters to be here soon. Now, from what I understand, Howard Hughes didn't care for people calling it the Spruce Goose. Can't imagine why. Straight ahead, bogey at 12 o'clock! I really have this one over. I got him, I got him! Help, he's still on me! He's still... Watch out! Boogie, 6 o'clock low! I nearly have this one over! Oh, for Pete's sake, now they've moved a barge in front of me to block my path! Boss, destroy that for me, will you, so that I can get out into the bay! Well, well something that I've been meaning to mention here is, uh, as, as I'm sure most of us have noticed, the Devastator is a pusher prop type plane. The, the propellers in the back pushing the plane rather than uh, in front pulling the plane. Now a number of planes have, uh, have used that trick in history, but, uh, but one stands out in particular, the, uh, the B-36 bomber that was the uh, plane of the day a little while back uh, I didn't get a chance to mention it 
during the uh, during the plan of the day segment, but uh, but the B-36 has an interesting little story uh, attached to it here. Uh, the B-36's engines were all mounted in a pusher configuration. They were all backwards, uh, pushing the plane along, and uh, and that did something besides just look interesting. Uh, it uh, it caused a problem actually. Uh, you see, the trouble with uh, with doing that kind of thing is that uh, no modifications were made to the engines when they made them uh, pusher instead of instead of tractor style. Uh, the engines were meant to be mounted forward, like a uh, like a regular engine, uh, and they were designed in a way that made that necessary. You see. Uh, you see, the exhaust air passed through the engine and over the carburetor and kept it warm. Uh, and when the engine was mounted backwards, the exhaust air no longer did that. Uh, and it began to ice up. And, uh, and when the carburetor begins to ice up, it doesn't, uh, uh, well, it doesn't perform quite the way it's supposed to. You see, the oxygen sensor will, will notice that not, uh, not enough fuel is getting in, and so it will increase the richness of the mixture. Uh, and as more ice builds up, the richness will get higher and higher and higher until the, basically pure fuel is coming out of the exhaust, and obviously that uh, that is not ideal. And uh, and so this this extremely rich mixture was prone to igniting, and generally you don't want your engine exhaust igniting when it's still in the engine. Uh, and you see that problem uh, caused the uh, the first American loss of a nuclear weapon when a uh, when a B-36 went down off the Pacific coast of uh, of Canada. Holy cow! It's Charlie Steele. Back up, boys. She's mine. Nathan Zachary. So, we meet again. It'll be an honor to shoot you down again. Don't expect to be so lucky this time, debutante steel. Watch out, bogey 12 o'clock low. Watch that defensive fire! This is Big John. Not good. They're all over me. Well, lucky for me, our Devastator... Ugh, flash rocket. Lucky for me, our Devastator does not seem to have... ...that same problem. So, uh, so we're mostly... Okay. Jack here. I've been hit. Nothing a little paint can't take, though. Oh my goodness. Somebody's causing me... Six kinds of trouble here. Oh, engines all shot full of holes. That's, uh, that's not ideal, of course. Watch it! That's live fire! Now, Charlie Steele is flying a, uh, a firebrand here. And, uh, they shot up another engine. One more and I won't be able to get this bird home. Oh, dear. With four engines out, I'll never be able to keep this thing airborne. I'm bailing out! Uh-oh. Well, that's a shame. Hmm. Okay, let's give this another shot. How about? Not a bad guy harassing. Spruce Goose, okay, let's steady. not. I'm airborne. Now all we have to worry about are those fighters. Take them down or we'll be scot free. More enemies on the scene. Hollywood Knights by the look of them. Anti-lead pirates. Holy cow! It's Charlie Steele! Back up, boys. She's mine. Mason Zachary. So, we meet again. It'll be an honor to shoot you down again. 
Don't expect to be so lucky this time, debutante Steel. Boy, this is one annoying theory. Okay, there we go. Now let's get back ahead, to the goose. Watch it. And let's make fire. sure she On stays in the air Bogey, this time. Oh, that could be a problem. So time faster than you. I'm catching too much fire up here. Over. That is a pretty slow climb. Okay. Straight ahead, bogey at 12 o'clock. Watch out, bogey, 12 o'clock low. Too far away. Oh, Charlie. On your left, bogey at 9 o'clock. Uh, ouch, Charlie. On your right, bogey at 3 o'clock. Christ, I'm getting sick of these turning games. Straight ahead, bogey at 12 o'clock. Boys, I got one of the engines. This is Betty. Another engine just flamed out. I'm taking oh, a beating Christ. down here, boss. Ah, jeez, sir, it's Betty. They shot off another engine. One more and I won't be able to get this bird home. With four oh, engines out, I'll never be able to keep oh, this thing airborne. God. I'm bailing out. Give this one more oh, shot. Uh, wait a minute, never mind. Third time's a charm, as they like to say. On your left, bogey at 9 o'clock. Yep, I could use some help over here. Over. Yep. Ah, take your hits! Take your hits! This is Betty. I'm out into the bay now and starting takeoff. Keep them off my back. Over. Yep. She's done for. Well, that was a little easier this time around. Now, let's... Be aware. Boss, it's Betty. Oh, the now all we have to worry about are those fighters. Oh, Take I'm them down, we'll be scot free. More enemies on the scene. Hollywood Knights by the look of them. And he's a lad, pirate. Holy cow! It's Charlie Steele! Back up, boys. She's mine. Nathan Zachary. So, we meet again. So it'll be an honor to shoot you down again. Don't expect to be so lucky this time, debutante Steel. Okay, there's another one down. It's gonna be much less of a problem. Come on, this time you can around, do better than that. Okay, I think that's everybody. Except Charlie Steele. Charlie, come back. I got something for you. Right, bogey at three o'clock. Charlie Steele, unlike most enemies in the game, fires rockets, and she tends to fire special rockets. I wasn't pointed at her at the right time, but uh, but she just dropped a flash, a rear-firing flash rocket, which can really ruin your day. Damn it, sometimes. I'll get you for that. Promises, promises. I'm all clear. No enemy fighters in sight, but damn, it's cold up here. I never got a chance to change out of my bathing suit. Better girl, Betty. Return to base, everybody. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished.
Well, that was not one of my cleaner runs. Uh, look at all the goodies we got here. Three Furies, two Hoplites, three Firebrands, and Charlie Steele herself. Now, this is interesting. The Empire State. Examiner, that's not our coast. That's, uh, that's interesting that we'd be getting a, our newspapers from all the way across the U.S. Long story short, this is telling us that the, uh, that the Spruce Goose has been stolen. That's nice. There's Betty. Betty in her outfit for the movies. Not bad for the 30s. Uh, there's Charlie Steele herself, founder of the uh, of the Hollywood Knights. I feel a little bad about what we did. And there's the Spruce Goose flying in formation with the Pandora and three Kestrels. I don't have three Kestrels. That's a little distressing, actually. Anyway, 14% ratio, fine. Cash earns... Uh... Ah. I have to explain something here because I have failed this mission a number of times. Uh, I decided to go through and play it through once. So I've actually already beaten this one, uh, and so I don't get money for beating it again. Um, we get $10,000. In fact, I should be looking at this. Here we go. Best to date. Uh, how does this change? Okay, exactly the same. Uh, I guess. 20% ratio, $10,000, 10000 where did that $10,000 come from, I wonder? Well, it's explained over here. Unloaded the Spruce Goose on some high rollers from the Empire State. Your money has been wired to your Pacifica accounts. They sold it, they sold the Spruce Goose, a piece of aviation history. But, things are not as they seem. There's something strange about the buyers. Whoever they are, they're not cops. Cops don't pay in German gold. This is the late 1930s. Keep in mind, something's fishy here. Fast Eddie. It's a good name for the dog. I flew through the bridge. You probably didn't see it, but I did. Hollywood Confidential. Charlie Steele. Shot down, Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, okay, fine. Bruises, muscle pulls, okay, great, so she wasn't injured, that's good. And then, a telegram from Charlie Steele. Zachary's enemies have, seem to have a, a habit of writing him letters after he shoots them down. Damn you, Zachary, stop, I thought our time together actually meant something to you, stop. I had hoped that our history would keep you from hunting in my town, stop. Next time it will take more than sweet talk and fancy flying to save you, stop. Charlie. Now, I do feel bad about this. I hope that our history would keep you from hunting in my town. Obviously, Zachary and Charlie had something at some point. Maybe still do. But this vendetta against Johnny Johnson has caused all sorts of problems. Caused him to hurt Charlie when maybe he didn't have to. Makes you feel a little sad. Anyway, we're going to take a look at our, uh, at our stuff over here, plan of the day and, and all that good stuff. And the next mission is... It's a mission that people who play Crimson Skies are very familiar with for one reason or another. It's that mission. And so, let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look at our stuff and, uh, and jump right into that mission. It might take me a little while. Today's plane of the day isn't a plane at all. The UH-1 Iroquois is a military helicopter powered by a single turboshaft engine with a two-bladed main rotor and tail rotor. The helicopter was developed by Bell Helicopter to meet the United States Army's requirement for a medical evacuation and utility helicopter in 1952. The first combat operation of the UH-1 was in the service of the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. The original designation of HU-1 led to the helicopter's nickname of Huey. In 1952, the Army identified a requirement for a new helicopter to serve as a medical evacuation, instrument trainer, and general utility aircraft. 
The Army determined that the current helicopters were too large, underpowered, or they were too complex to maintain easily. In November 1953, revised military requirements were submitted to the Department of the Army. Twenty companies submitted designs for their bid for the contract, including Bell Helicopter with the Model 204 and Kamen Aircraft with the turbine-powered version of the H-43. On February 23, 1955, the Army announced its decision, selecting Bell to build three copies of the Model 204 for evaluation. The UH-1 has long been a symbol of U.S. involvement in Southeast Asia in general and Vietnam in particular, and as a result of that conflict has become one of the world's most recognized helicopters. During the conflict, the craft was upgraded, notably to a larger version based on the Model 205. This version was initially designated the UH-1D and flew operationally from 1963. During service in the Vietnam War, the UH-1 was used for various purposes and various terms for each task abounded. The UH-1s tasked with a ground attack or armed escort role were outfitted with rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and machine guns. These gunship UH-1s were commonly referred to as frogs or hogs if they carried rockets, and cobras or simply guns if they had guns. UH-1s tasked and configured for troop transport were often called slicks due to an absence of weapon pods. Slicks did have door gunners, but were generally employed in the troop transport and medevac roles. During the war, 7,013 UH-1s served in Vietnam, and of these, 3,305 were destroyed. In total, 1,074 Huey pilots were killed, along with 1,103 other crew members. The U.S. Army phased out the UH-1 with the introduction of the UH-60 Blackhawk. Although the Army UH-1 residential fleet has around 700 UH-1s that were to be retained until 2015, primarily in support of Army aviation training at Fort Rucker and in selected Army National Guard units. Several hundred are still in use today by several countries, including Vietnam, who still fly several Hueys captured during the war. 